I think in retrospect, the critique that a lot of people have made about uh, the AKP's foreign policy vision was that it built on a moment when Turkey was becoming much more powerful economically uh, and in a more geopolitical sense. Uh, but it then became very taken with this newfound power and perhaps overemphasized it, exaggerated it. Uh, so it certainly made sense that following the end of the Cold War, following the end of the Soviet threat that Turkey had dealt with for almost half a century, um, you know, Turkey would try to take advantage of the power vacuum that, that created to become more involved in its region, to play a greater role in the Balkans, say, in the Caucasus, in the Middle East, uh, at a time when Turkey's economy was shifting from that was much more internally focused and statist to an export-oriented economy. You know, it made perfect sense for Turkey to look for new markets uh, amongst its neighbors and to try to pursue good relations uh, that would facilitate building those new markets. The problem was that as the situation became more complicated, this led to Turkey trying to punch above its weight in certain situations. You know, the critique would certainly be that trying to topple Assad after the start of the Syrian civil war was not necessarily a bad policy, was certainly not necessarily an immoral policy. Uh, the problem that Turkey ran into was that when it became clear that Turkey didn't have the resources to do this single-handedly, didn't have the resources to do this without more direct American support, uh, instead of recognizing that limitation and stepping back, uh, Turkey continued its policy, continued trying to topple Assad through what at the time seemed like the only means available, which was the support of increasingly radical, increasingly religiously oriented actors. And that's what eventually put Turkey in the position where uh, it suddenly had the Islamic State on its doorstep and helped lay the groundwork for the breakdown in US-Turkish relations that we're facing today. Certainly one of the things that AKP did in order to facilitate Turkey's economic growth during its first years in power was pursue uh, Ahmet Davutoglu's always somewhat awkwardly translated zero problems with neighbors strategy. Uh, following a you know, stretch, especially during the Cold War, when Turkey had had very difficult relations with all of its neighbors. Uh, David Olu saw both the practical and economic benefits of being on good terms with them. Uh, whereas at various points in Turkish history, the past had always seemed like an obstacle to good relations with Turkey's immediate neighbors. Uh, you know, the Arabs, the Greeks uh, remembered the Ottoman Empire uh, in a very negative light. Certainly the Armenians did even more than the others. Uh, Ahmed Olu's insight, and he was partially successful in this, was to suddenly present the Ottoman Empire as something, a shared history, something that was capable of bridging uh, the divides between Turkey and its neighbors. Uh, you know, so in the early days of uh, the AKP's foreign policy, this was actually a, I think, eminently practical uh, and partially successful policy. Turkey sometimes came under criticism in Washington, certainly for its efforts to improve relations with some of its Middle Eastern neighbors, uh, countries like Syria and Iran. This was sometimes presented as kind of Islamist or anti-Western foreign policy. But initially, at least, Turkey was doing this as part of a broader foreign policy vision, which also, again, involved uh, greatly improved ties with Greece, an effort to end the uh, Cyprus divide. Uh, more dramatically and ultimately unsuccessfully, an effort to mend ties with the Republic of Armenia. Uh, in this context, you know, Ahmed Zabudolu's neo-Ottomanism sometimes in its most romantic seemed like a vision of almost a kind of regional European Union where you would use uh, improved trade relations, visa liberalization, uh, diplomatic solutions to foreign policy problems in place of hard power uh, to create a zone of shared prosperity. Unfortunately, when this foreign policy fell apart, both because of some very intractable problems uh, between Turkey and its neighbors, between some of Turkey's neighbors and each other, 
Uh, and then amidst the chaos of the Arab Spring, when it wasn't clear that anyone uh, knew what a pragmatic foreign policy would necessarily look like, uh, Turkey's what had been a kind of intentionally pragmatic and multilateral foreign policy that uh, quite consciously tried to draw on the liberal aspects of Ottoman history moved towards something much more Islamist, a foreign policy that drew instead on this image of the Ottoman Empire as an Islamic uh, polity, drawing the Islamic, Ottoman Empire's history as a caliphate. Uh, and, you know, whereas in one incarnation, Davut Olu's kind of neo-Ottoman vision involved making peace with someone like Assad. In the second incarnation, it involved supporting Sunni rebels in an effort to topple Assad.